Hey movie junkies, welcome back to Twin Flicks where we are always celebrating the magic of movies with you. So Arrow Video sent me a new movie that just dropped a week or so ago to review and it is Southland Tales. I have a very love-hate relationship with this movie which I'll get into uh, in my review. How this video is going to work is I'm going to dive into the history of the film. Then I'm going to get into my review, my thoughts on the movie, and also my thoughts between a theatrical cut and the never released cans cut that's included on here. Then I'm going to get into um, the Blu-ray uh, quality, see all the changes that Arrow made, and also get into all the special features. So sit back, buckle up, and get ready to be transported into the surreal world of Southland Tales. Now, over the years of watching movies and paying attention to Hollywood, I've seen, and I'm sure you have as well, countless directors over the years, after having huge success coming off of their first feature, running into the dreaded second movie curse. And five years after Richard Kelly's Donnie Darko became a huge mega cult hit, he tried his hand at bringing a film that he had worked on for actually a number of years. In fact, this was a huge passion project of his, and he wasn't just stopping at one movie. No, he had a whole connected universe in mind that included anime shorts, comics, webisodes, a whole trilogy of films, all existing in the surreal, meth-field-driven world of Southland Tales. In fact, uh, its its theatrical debut at Can at the Cannes Film Festival it, it was such a dismal failure in the screening to the point that the producer of the film said it was the most painful, excruciating, awkward screening he has ever attended. So much so that Richard Kelly decided to head back into the editing bay and he edited out about 10 to 20 minutes out of the film, hoping to just salvage the film before it hit worldwide theaters. Now, the three leads are Dwayne The Rock Johnson in one of his first roles. He plays a movie star with amnesia, and he has this awkward, goofy tick. It's never explained what this weird tick is about. Uh, I, I don't know, it's, but it's, it, it didn't work. Whatever was going on there didn't work. It also stars uh, Sarah, Sarah Michelle Gillar as a porn actress trying to go legit as a reality talk show host. And also it stars Sean William Scott, who in my opinion is really the main character of the film. Uh, he play, actually plays a dual role. He plays a, a cop and he also plays his political activist twin. Now there's a, there's really a lot to love in this movie and I can t I, I can see how on paper how it all made sense and, and his response to the paranoia of post 9/11 America but instead what comes off on the screen is just a jumbled disjointed mess but yet I can't stop watching it I just can't stop watching the glorious mess that's up on the screen every single time it's on now, love it or hate it, you cannot deny the immense imagination that's on display throughout the film. It has a great score, incredibly insane and intense visuals, and there are some terrific ideas spread all over the place in this movie. But how the film is directed, how it's put together is just a hot mess. Scenes don't connect with one another. Uh, you have actors that truly look like they have no idea what's going on and a plot that keeps tossing and turning that you quickly lose track of what's going on or even the reason why. This is a perfect, a perfect example of what's on paper does not always work well translated on screen. Now I will say that one thing that has going for it is that this is definitely a repeat viewing. Each time you watch it, you pick up something that you never saw before either in the background or, or plot detail so the rewatchability value is strong with this movie there's a lot to admire about its huge scope the the ambition in the film and the unconventional storytelling from richard kelly along with its play on social satire and very odd eccentric casting choices 
But at the same time, it's also, as I've previously said, it's a gigantic steaming hot pile mess. I'm giving Southland Tales a 3.5 out of 5 just because of the awkward absurdity of the film. Now, as for the cans cut that uh, Arrow has provided on this Blu-ray, it's never been released before. It's never been seen outside of Cannes Film Festival. While it does include more character beats, uh, more dialogue, explains more, and it also does include a few whole scenes that were cut out, which are all interesting to see, but it doesn't make the film any better or any less of a mess. The movie also f definitely feels its runtime at about 2 hours and 40 minutes. I'm giving Southland Tales Cans Cut a 2.5 out of a 5. So the theatrical and Cans Cut have both been upgraded with the exact same transfer. So this review is for both versions of the film. With a fresh new 2K scan sourced from the original 35mm negative, a new HD 1080p transfer, and also the intended aspect ratio of 240 to 1, all supervised by director Richard Kelly and his DP. Now why they, they stuck with a 2K scan and didn't spring for a 4K scan? I don't know. Maybe because they thought the movie wasn't worth it? Now right away when I popped this in, I did notice Arrow's release is slightly darker in the overall appearance than the Sony Blu-ray release. And being this transfer was supervised by Richard Kelly and his DP, the slightly darker appearance stays completely true to Richard Kelly's original look for the film. And being the film always had a lot of various color schemes, they all look very fresh, bold, and vibrant, where the array of colors really pop off the screen. Skin tones look terrific, facial close-ups look really good. Uh, Grainfield is also very natural looking and stable, along with solid black levels. This is a very striking presentation that wipes out the original Blu-ray release completely. Arrow Video really stepped up to the plate with this. As for the audio, both cuts do offer uh, the same uh, surround track, which is a DTS HD lossless 5.1 track that is very solid. This is a fantastic, uh, stellar uh, sounding Blu-ray. The film has a lot of different environmental and ambient sound effects, but also a lot of other bigger sound effects uh, that constantly fills the surround channels, giving impressive amount of immersion. Now, one thing I noticed right away is the use of the LFE levels or, or the bass level. It's actually used more to enhance the layers of the effects, and it completely works. Dialogue is also rendered very cleanly and crisp. As for all the special features, once again, Arrow Video has not disappointed. Uh, the O-ring contains the new artwork, and as per usual with Arrow Video releases, it also includes a really nice reversible sleeve with the new artwork and also the original poster work. And it also includes a really nice booklet detailing notes from the director uh, about the movie and also about the new video transfer from Arrow Video. It also includes a new 2020 audio commentary by Richard Kelly. The making of an unfinished film is it's a in-depth feature-length documentary that features interviews with the cast and crew, four archival featurettes. It also includes a cool animated short and the theatrical trailer. So I'm giving the Arrow video release of Southland Tales Blu-ray a 4.5 out of a 5. It's a solid, beautiful Blu-ray to have in your collection. Now before you jump out of this video, I want you to do me a huge favor and jump down in the comments and let me know your thoughts on Southland Tales and if you plan on picking up this Blu-ray. And I also want to thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to watch this little review here. Uh, if you haven't already, consider hitting that subscribe button and also remember to hit that bell button as well. Two things will happen. One, you'll be notified when new videos drop. And second, it also boosts uh, the algorithm of our channel out there in the YouTube-verse and makes it easier for people to find us. So I really appreciate that. As always, thanks so much for watching this video, and I'll catch you next time.